Thanks very much. I'm excited to be here today and to hear from our esteemed panel. Um, just want to briefly introduce them to you, um, give you a little bit of context for who you'll be hearing from. Um, I put them into two big buckets. I would say smart home automation and design solutions is the first. Um, so CJ Edmonds is with Smart Rent. They do smart home automation for builders, property managers, and renters. Um, and you'll also hear from Jonathan Boriak from KTGY Architecture and Planning. They're a leading firm with expertise, including residential, mixed use, urban and master plan communities. On the business communication management solutions side, uh, we have Chris Graham with Constellation Home Builder Systems. Um, they work with home builders and developers, everything from land development and budgeting to website integration, sales and selections, accounting, purchasing, construction, operations, vendor collaboration, warranty and customer experience. So welcome, Chris. Uh, Felix Vasquez with uh, Hyphen Solutions works with home builders and suppliers. They do construction scheduling, project management and supply chain management, land and progress payments, ERP, CRM, warranty and homeowner portals. So that's Felix with Hyphen. And then we have Jeff Mink with ECI Software Solutions. They work with home builders, developers and suppliers offering end to end integrated solutions, including back office, construction, project management, lot management, builder or uh, build process and customer relationship management solutions. So um, some really good expertise on the prop tech side today. So excited to have you with us. As Peter said, please uh, post questions. I've got my other screen up to kind of follow anything that you guys are adding. Uh, but we're going to get things started and uh, toss a few questions out to everyone uh, to give you a little background um, on what they know and they can share with you. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is, is communication and collaboration. So what best practices are you seeing for engaging customers at a distance? Um, we've got a few that will respond to this. If we can start with you, Jeff, at ECI. Sure, Betsy. Um, well, we certainly live in a world that's dominated by Amazon and Apple right now. I don't think anybody would contest that. Um, and what we're seeing are home builders today viewing their website really as today's model home. Um, they want to make sure that it's interactive, uh, engaging, that there's not static information on there, that things like lot availability are updated in real time, and that everything is viewable and maneuverable through mobile devices. Um, want to make sure that you have online help and assistance as needed. But uh, that's kind of where our industry is going, and, and that's what we're seeing builders prepare for. Great, thank you. Um, how about on your end, CJ from Smart Rent? Yeah, so uh, we were already working on self-guided tours, and this is where you're able to allow uh, a potential home buyer or renter to be able to go into a property and see it on their own uh, pre-pandemic. But with the pandemic, it is it's now not a nice thing to, to have. It is a, a definite must, and I think that um, every builder needs to be thinking about this. Uh, for selling homes or for renting. And uh, we were engaged back in March, right when the pandemic hit uh, by Lennar. And Lennar has always been a company that's trying to be at the forefront of adopting technology. They adopted uh, our self-guided tour product across the whole country. And, and the, the stats kind of speak for themselves. Like the, we we're seeing about 75,000 tours across our customers every month. So people want to tour on their own. They want to be able to go and get a code that not only gives it on their phone where they can access, but you want to make sure that that, that system is set up to where it will turn off the alarm system. It could adjust the HVAC, uh, lighting, all of those things to make it an incredible experience so that when somebody is going to either buy that home or rent that home, they're able to uh, it, you know, have, have that uh, really um, um, personal experience. And I think a stat that's really interesting to, to note is 34% of the tours that we're seeing are clicking the uh, tour now function. <clears throat> so they can schedule it whenever they want, whenever the builder decides to allow them. But 34% are in front of the house right then. 
and they're clicking to her now, they're going through the process to validate themselves, they're getting their code and they're walking right in. And uh, that is definitely gonna help people be able to either rent or, or sell that home in a much quicker way. And, and I would add, it's, it's really important to make sure that you have the backend technology to be able to track those leads. So if you are using a CRM like, like ECI's Lasso or Salesforce or Microsoft 365, whatever it is, you wanna make sure that any kind of that lead generation is being captured. So um, uh, I think it is the, it's a pandemic necessary uh, tool but once the pandemic's over, hopefully soon, we, uh, we're, we're gonna see it continue. Uh, there's, there's, uh, I, I bet that we're gonna really see the uptick in how many people are trying to tour on their own. Absolutely, I would agree. I mean, I think that people have been expecting this for a while because you can do it with pretty much any other industry and the pandemic has really just forced us to do it. Um, and I would just see that only continuing to grow. Well, what are you seeing on your end, Chris, at Constellation? Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. And you know, like Jeff and Felix and CJ, I could talk for hours uh, you know, on this topic. But um, you know, I think one of the things you know this year that we've seen is just you know kind of a testament to the resiliency of the industry. Everyone's been trying to do a lot of new things very quickly, trying to adapt. And obviously, you know, as a software provider to home builders and developers, you know, we've we've benefited from that. But you know, I think at, at Constellation, we've tried to uh, extend sort of our spectrum of offerings. And one of the advantages we have is um, another part of our business. We have about 500,000, half a million uh, real estate agents that use one or more of our software products. And we've been uh, looking to that industry um, for some technology and for things that, you know, the used home uh, agents are doing. And you know, obviously, uh, you know, the, the president of that group, you know, really hates it when I call them used homes. But you know, I think uh, I think it was you know, maybe Larry Webb or Tim Costell that said that first. And I just love the term. Um, but, you know, if I, if I look at what they're doing, like we have technology where you can find buyers before they find you. And so we've got a whole bunch of analytics and data where we can you know, predict who's going to who should be you know, looking for a new home. Um, some of the most progressive builders are doing stuff like that way ahead of the curve, which is nice. Um, and then some of our aggressive builders, but maybe not so leading edge, you know, they're also selling homes online, you know, much like Jeff said, but the benefit is that you've got accurate availability, accurate pricing. If you need to change a price, it happens immediately. And the best builders in that area are managing that data in one place. So it could, you, you set the price once and it goes everywhere. You don't have to worry about changing it in 50 different places on a weekend or something like that. Um, the other thing that builders are doing really well is also the design studio and selection uh, process. That's going online more so than ever. Uh, buyers can, um, you know, look at what's available, manage their budget, and you know, in the comfort of their own own home, prepare for any sort of online appointments or other appointments to to make those selections. And then, like Jeff said, you know, the website becomes a key tool. Um, but then, even beyond that, there's also the the buyer experience, right? And so once you're under contract. You know, you've got to be sure that you're communicating with them, and the best builders you know, do that from you know, before contract right through to the very end with uh, customer experience and warranty. They track all that data and they they use it to their advantage. So that's what yeah, you know, that's what I love to see right now, and that's what's what we're seeing. Great. Um, on the flip side, you know, so that, that's really the customer experience. How are your technology supporting socially distant transactions between builders and suppliers? And where are the breakdowns happening? Um, so we're gonna toss that one over to you first, Felix at Hyphen. Do you wanna unmute yourself? Didn't know if you were doing that. Great, thank you so much. I appreciate the question. Uh, you know, it's a shame that it's taken a pandemic to get us to think about how do we do things more efficiently. But as we look at digitizing data and creating processes that really replace the manual processes we've taken for granted for years, uh, there's a lot of efficiencies to be gained and those efficiencies mean you're socially distant. So I think a number of guys here on the panel today have been doing 
PO distribution for years electronically, right? They've been doing document sharing electronically over the web for years, right? So, so you see these things that we've just kind of taken for granted, schedule updates over the internet, over your phone, where you don't have to be sitting uh, next to your superintendent if you're a supplier or going into the construction trailer if you're a supplier to find out what you're going to work on next. So, so we've seen those things that have been around for years, but I think the thing that we've seen a huge uptick in this year is the lien waiver process, which is typically you know, some thick book of lien waivers that you sign for every pay, uh, purchase order that's out there. We've seen an uptick in that. Actually, we, we did uh, more lien waivers this year by July than we did in all of 2019. So we're really seeing an uptick of people trying to go, you know what, we don't need people walking into our office and handing us a lien waiver and we're handing them a check and you know you let go of one and, and you grab the other and hope that you get it all done and that uh, you know it's gonna be a permanent one and it's not a temporary lien waiver or a conditional lien waiver. So we've seen that really tick up. So, so the folks are seeing that that's actually a better process. And then you can do subordinate liens onto there. So if, if Chris has uh, contracted me to do something and I contracted Betsy to do something for me, like we can track that lien waiver process through subs of subs, if you will. So we've seen a real uptick in that kind of technology. One, it's better. Two, it's faster. It's easier to report on and it supports socially distant. Uh, the other thing we've seen a big increase for specifically with home builders is, you know, we talk about that check and the lien waiver process is hyphen wallet, which is, hey, we'll outsource your entire payables uh, function for you from a standpoint of you don't have to print checks anymore. From a supplier standpoint, you can go to one login and for every builder you work with, decide how you want to get paid. So if you want to get an overnight check or get a single use card or a P card or D card, V card, whatever that payable is, using hyphen wallet, you can consolidate all your options and never have to go drive across town to a builder's office to go pick up your manual check. And you know, everybody's wearing a mask and hoping that they don't breathe on each other and they're spraying their check in the envelope that it's in down with the, with the antibacterial soap. So those two things we've really seen an uptick on. And the breakdowns that we see happen is just where you're not getting instant real-time communication where I'm looking at a schedule and it wasn't updated in the last two days where I'm looking at a buyer selection sheet and the colors are from a month ago, right? So, so the breakdowns we're seeing is where the processes truly haven't been integrated from system to system. And, and so, you know, I've got a lot of shared uh, clients with the guys on the screen here where our integrations are together and we just see the process flow work seamlessly from product to product end to end. That's great. Um, now, Jonathan, you have a different perspective being in an architectural firm. What are you seeing in this this area? Yeah, I'd say, you know, much like Felix said, the, the digit digitization of our information, it's been here for a long time um, with the pandemic. We've seen some of the slowest adopters being jurisdictions finally coming on board. They all stopped and just kind of froze for a while um, and then realized that this isn't a short-term thing and they have to make a change. Um, I love that in terms of our ability just to do more work, um, right? We're not doing the travel time. We're able to collaborate remotely. And in some ways, it's easier for us all to schedule um, with these jurisdictions and with our clients and consultants, right? We're not having to figure out travel time. And for us as a national firm, um, easier to bring in experts from all of our different um, offices to really um, have the, the most educated voices at the table. So loving some of that collaborative uh, software and tools. Breakdowns though, it's, it's kind of funny. It's still the reliance on email for information. And I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a scenario where a builder called us and they're building from a, a Delta two set in the field. Well, the, the actual current set is like Delta six. Delta two wasn't even the building permit set. It was Delta three. That breakdown was because we're providing drawings to the client via email. Someone at the client's office is turning around and responsible to provide that to the field. There's plenty of technology there that tracks that and alerts people. Um, but really from what we're seeing on the home builder side, very few people are utilizing those technologies. Um, so I really see opportunities for people to jump into that. Um, helps us, helps them, um, and ideally kind of protects us from uh, some of these problems that occur. Well, version control is a huge issue, and I would imagine you're saying you're not traveling as much. It is easier for us to schedule meetings, but I find that also means we get twice the email because people aren't traveling. They're not sitting in the airport anymore. They're not driving in the car. They have more time to email you. So yeah, those, I think those solutions are critical 
um, and we need to look at how we can adopt those. Um, you should just be able to go online and say, before I do this, let me make sure it's the latest version of it. Um, right. So that's definitely something we need to work on. Um, so on the business process management side, this is kind of an open question for you guys. Um, you can answer with your own technology or, or something else that you're seeing. Um, but what's the one innovation or technology you're seeing people adopting to increase productivity and cost efficiencies? And how is it changing mindsets among people and processes? Um, so we're gonna start on this one with Chris at Constellation. Great, thanks, Betsy. Um, yeah, I think along the same lines as what I was speaking about before, like bringing your sales process more online, um, allowing your home buyers and prospective home buyers to interact from your website and through various tools. Um, I just think it's been it's been great for the industry, and it's been really nice, you know, to see builders leverage the data that they have in our back office systems and make it available. Uh, externally. So, you know, you think about that, you've got, I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, accurate pricing, accurate availability. Um, you know, some of the builders are also taking that whole process online and doing, you know, base house contracts directly from their website using various e-signature technologies. Um, you get that seamless integration from the signing process into the back office. That's really made things more efficient. Um, you don't have to wait to enter the contract later or kind of deal with paper contract and, you know, have someone enter it into the system, which has been really nice. Um, I think the other thing, you know, I would give builders bonus points, you know, if they truly are able to manage that information in one place and have it flow everywhere, you know, whether it's going to their home buyers, um, you know, to a portal for their, their homeowners, to their website, to their trades, to, you know, the rest of their team, you know, it's just, it's really nice when, when builders you know, have that advantage and you know, obviously it's something that we strive for and that we have within our, within our products. Um, and yeah, again, like I, I talked about the, the used homes piece, right? Like when you buy a used home, it's all over the internet, right? There's a million different virtual tours and a million different things you can use um, to gather information about that home. And um, you know, why can't new home builders have that? Can't hear you, Betsy. You're on mute, Ben. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be quiet. I was just saying there are some really cool tools out there to capture that now, either as a builder. You know, we looked at Homesada as an example. There's some cool tools out there to do that and, and then transfer that data to the homeowner. So that's uh, definitely a good thing. So what are you seeing in this space, Jeff, from ECI? So what we see is clearly there's a lot of shiny balls out there and everybody's focused on buyer experience. And, and as we've spoke, putting things on the website, um, engaging home buyers there. But what, what's really critical is that you have like a, a CRM or some type of technology there that captures intelligence for you. Um, we want to understand, you know, who are these people? What are they looking at? You know, are you gathering analytics on what they're clicking on, what lots they're looking at, what models they're looking at? Um, can you do some social media scraping to learn a little bit about them, to set you up to do very personalized follow-up and uh, targeted marketing? Because that can be a big differentiator between the other builder down the street and, and what you're doing. Um, and when we talk about really productivity and efficiencies, there's a big focus on all that, the sales piece, but you're going to lose productivity and efficiencies if you're not fully integrated with the back office and then furthermore out into the field. Um, because it's one thing to sell the house, but then we still have to build what we sold. And if you want to be efficient and you want to be productive, you need to have that information and updates in real time. And um, so in the past, I think our industry has looked at what is the best for each part of whether it's warranty or whether it's you know, a PO system or whether it's a CRM. Now it's more about an end-to-end -end solution, making sure that you have something that you enter somebody's information once and you never have to enter it again. And as we know, home buyers like to change their minds throughout the process and that happens all the time. So if you're gonna be efficient and productive, you've gotta have a solution in place that updates everybody in real time anytime something changes. So 
you know, that's, that's what we're seeing. That's what we're promoting with, with our builders is just to make sure that you don't lose sight on that connectivity of the back office and, and, and subcontractor trade operations with what has just been sold. And it may not be as sexy as all the bells and whistles that you see on the front end marketing side, but people might not. be people might be really jazzed and excited about what you just sold them. And if you screw up on the back end, you're in big trouble. <laughs> if you want to use a football analogy, you've got the, the good looking quarterback up front selling it, and then it's the linemen in the back that are doing all the blocking. And you got to make sure the quarterback and the linemen are talking together. Right? And you don't want to break any legs, right? Nah, that's, that's <laughs> so CJ, you have a bit of a different view from the smart rent side. What are you seeing in this space? Yeah, we, we look at it um, not as part of the building process, but once you have built, uh, then you have vacants, right? Uh, everybody has vacants, whether it's a, a new home that you're selling or uh, the, the term of the, uh, the used home uh, that you're trying to rent out. I love that. Uh, and so managing those vacants, it, it is, there's so many ways to, to be more efficient in that. And if you're using any kind of smart technology, uh, you can you can manage the the utilities in the unit. So having smart uh, thermostats so that you're able to keep your utility costs down. Uh, if you are doing the tours, crank that temperature uh, up in the winter so that the person has a nice, warm, cozy home, but get it back down when it's empty. Uh, then if you look at security, uh, integrating with Ring or other security products so that you can turn security on and off, um, and, and really, uh, one of the things that I think is really important is, is uh, damaging uh, damage through, through leaks. Like, uh, definitely not a, a sexy thing uh, product-wise, but you, know, you can take a, a little $30 leak sensor and throw those in, at the, um, all the different water places, you know, from water heaters to washer dryer to sinks. And if you have a leak in the, in the units occupied, you might be able to catch that pretty quick without that sensor if it's vacant. You might have a leak for days or weeks and your small you know, $1,000 cleanup leak turns into an actual insurance claim. So things like that that uh, really can be managed through the vacants. And uh, if you need to turn a home, so if it is a rental and you need to allow vendors and you need access control, and instead of providing a key or, or going with them, being able to provide an access code that's directly for that vendor for that cleaning event, and then they are able to leave um, you know, when they showed up, when they left, all of that makes you much more efficient to manage those, those vacants and uh, save money. On the making money side, I think it really looks back to the self-guided tours and you're going to increase sales traffic. You're going to increase the, the sales pace and actually will decrease your sales cycle. And then um, all of that's going to turn into a, a higher sales margin. So um, really uh, thinking about your vacants more and applying technology to uh, make yourself more efficient and make yourself more money. Absolutely. So Felix from Hyphen, what, what are you seeing on your end? So, you know, I, I think for years, our, our home builders have, have said, I, I've never made a dime on warranty yet, right? So, so it's just been this afterthought and you sell a home and you hope no one ever calls you after, after they move in and that would be a great experience. But, you know, now as we look at leasing lifestyle and where you might lease a home at, for different stages of your life and moving across, home builders are taking a much more longer view of warranty. And so how you address warranty, how you treat warranty with respect to how do you take in the order? How do you measure your effectiveness at resolving issues? Uh, are you using an actual warranty system that will give you trends and data so that you can isolate? Hey, do I have one off event where you know, a nail got popped into a water line and it broke over some period of time? Or do I have the same trade partner making the same error every time he builds his house and being able to call on those things. Because look, I, I think those are real important. The user experience of your warranty system so that when a you know, Janie homeowner calls up and gets a phone call, okay, who are you and, and where do you live? And when did you close on your home? Those are all questions that let's face it, technology should tell you. As soon as she called in, you should be saying, hi, Janie homeowner, it's so wonderful to talk to you. Are, are you calling about your home on name, address, you know, all those other pieces where you really change that experience. And the tools that we have available now 
allow us to do that, right? Uh, the other thing is, is that if we can start looking at the trend analysis, uh, how many times are we getting this water leak? How many times are we seeing, you know, the paint's the wrong color or the patch didn't work? And we start addressing the root cause, then we can really save money. So I think two things I would say for warranty. One is let's reduce what we're spending on warranty by figuring out what's causing warranty items. The other thing is let's not tarnish the brand Let's really keep our brand strong by making sure when a homeowner calls in, we treat them like this is part of our customer journey. Our customer journey didn't stop when we sold you the home or when we built the home. You're still on your customer journey with you. And as a home builder, it's up to me to make sure that's pleasant all the way through, not, not just until home close and boom, we got it. So, so how I treat you post-close really can impact my brand because look, someone who's mad is going to tell everybody they know they're mad. Someone who's happy, really, really happy, maybe they'll tell two people as they're walking their dog or their kids down the model home and they see people coming in and out and tell you how much they love their new home, right? So, so I think warranty is just an oft overlooked process where builders can really separate themselves from the customer journey if they extend it all the way through. Absolutely, and it's really hard to recover from people in today's environment with the with social media and everything with people who are dissatisfied it's much easier to try and, and nip that in the bud earlier on in the process um, than it is to try and fix it later so it may not cost you in the traditional sense that they think but it's certainly going to cost you there is a price <laughs> right it may not cost you but there is a price to it absolutely so jonathan what are you seeing in this space yeah, and I just before I jump to that, as Felix is talking, I'm picturing it's like on star for homes. Like at some point, you're just going to speak to the speaker and you're going to have your usual representative who knows everything about your house and its history. Um, I love that. Um, for us, I would say the innovation in tech, we've seen people adopting um, rapidly, especially during the pandemic, uh, continues to be offsite factory built construction methods. Um, and I would group that kind of broadly, um, whether it's panelized, modular, um, you know, the Integra is, there's a variety of technology um, and that space is growing really rapidly. So we're trying to not necessarily focus on one solution, but try to gather all of them knowing that to, to meet housing demand in the future, it's gonna be a combination of different strategies. Um, but we're, we're seeing people gravitating towards that A, Right, the labor market is aging out. Um, I think average age of construction workers now is like 42. Um, mm -hmm. That's slightly terrifying. Um, B, we're seeing a lot more, especially here in California, a lot more PLA agreements on construction. And so anything you can do to move some construction phase into a factory is just reducing some of those on-site costs. Um, and then really kind of responding to materialities as well. Um, and I think some of the benefits, the ways it's changing process and mindset is it's elevating construction back in the field again, right? Some of these factory built uh, construction companies, they're coming out, they're surveying and laser guiding that foundation and the concrete subs, they've gotten pretty loosey goosey with their measurements. And these guys will come out, snap it and say, no, we're not certifying the pad. We can't drop our panel on this um, because you didn't do a good enough job. That concrete sub now either has to change their process, get better, educate their team, or they're gonna lose business in the future. Um, so I'm hoping it elevates quality in the future. I think we're gonna see that. Um, and then that ties back into what Felix is talking about again, elevate quality, hopefully your warranty issues back down. Again, we're building structurally tighter buildings, more environmentally sound buildings, um, acoustically better buildings. That's reducing risk for all of us and making um, better homes that, you know, less issues for the life cycle. And we have a, we have a question from an attendee and I see that Felix is going to ask or answer this one. Um, not sure if their question went through, but it did. So we gotcha. And if you have a question, be sure to type it in for us and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Um, but what would the estimated cost of an end to end solution be? We're actually a startup home builder. We expect to build about 100 units um, in 21, 322, and 623. So nice growth path you have outlined. Um, you control all the land to do so. Uh, what would you recommend for a startup with the 
above expectations. So Felix, your thoughts? Uh, sure, look, I, I think costs can vary widely from just licensing costs to do you have to buy servers? Do you have, are you buying a cloud solution? What specific features and functions do you want to cover in it? Do you want it to be an entire supply chain solution? Do you want your sales completely integrated? Do you want your warranty completely integrated inspection? So there's a lot of cost in this. You know, I would tell you it's probably going to be somewhere between one and three hundred dollars a home, depending on all the different solutions you could look at. I, I will tell you, start with your ERP, and that's because it's the basis for understanding all your cost, your profit, your margins. Uh, it's the basis for how you interact and publish to everyone else from your websites, whether that's for sales, whether that's for contractors and suppliers, whether that's for manufacturers. It's it's the platform for which you're going to start your collaboration. Uh, I like cloud-based platforms because you don't have to buy anything else. What you do is you let someone else run the software and you just learn how to be an expert in that. Uh, and and I, there, there's several good sol solution providers here. I would recommend Bricks. I'm sure that the other two guys would have different answers for that. Uh, but I, I would say, you know, take your time and really pick something that matches the way you build instead of forces to you to change to what that software does. Really pick something that's going to grow with you where the, the software provider is going to continue to grow and invest in the product that you choose. And you have several good choices here uh, on the table. Any other comments on that before we go to another question? I, I would just add, Betsy, you know, one of the things you want to do too is just look inwardly at your organization, understand the, the people that you have, that you know, there's a cultural shift when you do this. People tend to resist change at times and you need to open your mind to changing some processes to leverage technology. You, um, you need to have data, right? Sometimes builders want to get started with an ERP and just understand that it's it's not the easy button to press. It's a it's a collaborative effort, and um, you know, so you want to just prepare your staff and, and be fully committed to this journey from top down to make it success. Anyone else on that front before we jump to the next question? I might as well stop, uh, speak up as well <laughs> since we're all doing quick pitches. Um, yeah, I, I would just say, you know, Jeff touched on the, the data, right? That's very important. Making sure that you've got a system where you can touch it once and that you can share it across your company. Um, you know, that's one of the things that we uh, really strive for in all of our implementations. But, you know, we come across builders every day that either have a, a system that they're not getting the most out of or they're, you know, they don't have a system where they're a startup, right? And, they need uh, someone to help them along the way. And I think when you focus on like some of the key problems or the key things that you want to address and kind of keep that at the forefront, uh, you'll be much more successful uh, down the road. Make sure that everyone gets a few wins and some quick wins out of the, uh, the project. Um, and then trust your team, right? Like you're gonna have a lot of data in that system. You need to be able to tell everybody, you know, to put the data in the system, to trust that they're gonna treat it properly, that it's uh, known, it can be sensitive information to the company. You know, I don't think people can make good decisions if they don't have uh, access to the data um, and that you trust your people to, to treat it wisely. Um, you know, I would also say that, you know, you need curious people as well. It's one thing to have the data, but it takes a special person to really spend some time and look at it and make decisions based on it. Well, and you also need to outline what decisions, how you intend to use the data beforehand. So the plan, the solution is only as good as the plan that's behind it. So um, great. Well, if anyone else has a question, plug it in. Uh, we have another question. Uh, many builders we engage with in the Alliance um, are saying that we have a supply chain crisis on our hands and it's a moving target. How can technology be leveraged to keep an eye on supply, manage costs, and keep production moving forward? So we're going to tee this one up to Felix first, and then we'll go to Jeff um, next. So there's a, there's a few things that we're doing today, right? And, and so we've got a new product that we launched this year called Supply Pro GM. And, and for those who don't know, we have a ton of suppliers on our system. One of the big things we're doing with Supply Pro GM, though, is publishing inventory status back to the builder so that as a builder, you can see whether the products you're ordering are in inventory or on back order or are never ever gonna be delivered and you're gonna be disappointed or you're gonna end up with 
a range and a microwave that don't match the dishwasher. That's something you like to know in advance to work with your homeowners to try and figure out substitutions. So it doesn't help when you have the right product, but it's in the wrong market. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking at. Um, Real-time geolocation of the subcontractors is another new new place, right? So when you're talking to someone, it's like, hey, this house is behind. Where are you at? Oh, I'm on the job. It looks like you're at Dunkin' Donuts. And and like that kind of stuff starts to get important, especially when you talk about, I, I don't know if it was Chris or someone that mentioned earlier, it might have been Jeff, that said, hey, look, uh, you know what's Jonathan? Like the, the trades themselves aren't getting a lot younger, right? So, so if things are getting more scarce and tighter, then we should actually be real careful about how we utilize those resources and not send them to job sites that aren't ready for them. In, in addition to that, another thing that we're doing in GM is we're actually publishing what's happening before you. So if you are the countertop guy, like we're publishing whether or not the cabinets are in yet, because you can't just go set cabinets down and, or hang them on a wall. You need the, or the countertops, you need the cabinets to be there in order to hang those. So, so we're looking at doing things like that, that really make better use of time for our suppliers. Because as a home builder, your cost for anything is a function of the supplier performing that duty for you. And so if you're hurting them with bad schedule, with bad data, with old information, and without true up to the second job, to real-time job information about the status of that uh, particular task, then you're increasing your cost and you're actually shrinking your labor pool because you're wasting their time. Okay, um, Jeff, what's your take on this question? So, so Felix covered quite a bit of that. Um, again, we, we, we spent some time talking about the front end piece and the sales piece and the ERP, but just as importantly in our industry, everybody's worried about even uh, trade shortages as we move mm -hmm. along. I mean, there's not a lot of younger folks coming in. Uh, so that makes it even more important for you to be an efficient builder and be a, a builder of choice. And, and the way you do that is to leverage technology. You know, we continue to invest on that piece. We have portal products. Um, we just acquired a company named Bolt to expand what we can do and position our builders to provide value to the trades. And, you know, to, to Felix's point, it really comes down to communication. What you, what you don't want to do is have contractors out there showing up to job sites where there's backordered products where they're not ready. You know, it's when we talk about efficiency and you talk about relationships, good trades are going to go down the street to another builder if they can't rely on you as a, as you know, a, a good builder. So it is very critical to have portals that update in real time as changes happen, whether it's on the schedule, whether it's on products and you know, again, as, as, as younger folks come through, they're more embracing on technology. So, uh, you know, so you don't want to just overlook that. It, it's very important. Okay. And Chris, any additional thoughts um, from Constellation on this front? Yeah, you know, I, I would just say like, um, you know, understanding your cost data and where the inefficiencies lie is super important. If you're running a business and you don't know what your costs are or how they could be changing, or do a little bit of sensitivity analysis to see what's gonna happen with your margins, uh, you're probably in, in trouble. And like I said, you need the data, it needs to be good. You need people who are curious enough to, to look at it and pay attention to it. Okay. Well, we've got about uh, six minutes left, but I think we have time for one quick question that's a little more consumer focused. Um, and then I know Peter has some uh, some close out information for us. So this one goes out to CJ and Jonathan. And so what tech project uh, products, excuse me, and modern community amen amenities are millennials, active adults and seniors demanding? Is there anything that was once a luxury item is now considered essential? So yeah, this, uh, yeah I'll, I'll, uh, this was totally sound self serving, but I don't think anybody will disagree. It just happens to be the business we're in. But you need you need IoT devices in your home. If if you if some of you on the panel don't, I would be shocked, right? We all have something at home. We have a Nest. We have a garage door opener. Well, consumers want this. They're expecting it, and they're expecting it if they're buying a house for sure. If they're renting it, they're expecting it too. And it's I think the the real key thing is that they they're all integrated. We don't want to get like we we have a partnership with LG and they have awesome washer dryers. They won't fold your clothes yet, but they will wash them on schedule. And uh, and so you have a washer dryer. You could have a front door lock, a back door lock. You have a ring yard motion sensor light. 
you have light switches in the house, Honeywell thermostat or Nest thermostat, whatever you have, demand by your vendor, whoever's going to help you manage all of that, that it's in one app and that it's all integrated. Felix said earlier, like all these companies need to be integrated. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's table stakes now. And so make sure that you aren't just thinking, wow, this is the coolest lock and I'm gonna put it on my units because it's a smart lock. Make sure that whatever device is gonna run that lock exactly is, is gonna be on an app. And you know, I, I'm kind of a power user because I'm in the business, but if you look at an app and you scroll, you know, all these devices are in my home. And they aren't all there. We don't build all this hardware. I have a Yale lock and I have different things, but, but consumers demand it. And the last thing I'll say on it is that demographics don't really matter anymore. I mean, we're, we're, you know, the, the baby boomers want this. Um, uh, my mother-in-law yesterday was like, when are you going to do a smart rent setup for my house? Like, like, you know, she's 65, like, doesn't matter. People want this. And, uh, um, and if you are in any communities where there's young, uh, you know, 20 year olds, millennials, Gen Xers, uh, they definitely want to, uh, they, they demand it. So um, it doesn't have to be smart rent, but you're going to, you're going to be losing ground if you're not doing that in your homes. And treat it as another utility and make sure it works as soon as they get in there. So yeah. They can fully benefit from it. Yeah, they can use it. And, and that's where some of our customers are putting the technology in their model unit. So they're showing it and they're able to do self-guided tours. But then once the person buys the home, then they convert over to an end user. And so the, the builder, it, like Lennar Imitation Homes is doing this. So they are selling it as a smart home and they're packaging in the pricing they have to pay to us up front. It's built into the price of the home. They're getting major margin on that. Uh, the revenue's there for the, the, the consumer will pay more for that smart home, yeah. So Jonathan, take it home. What are you seeing on, on your end? Totally agree with CJ. And I would say again, like he just mentioned, it's, it's part of your standard base price of your home to be a smart home now. It's, it's not an option you're offering. It's got to be baseline standard. Um, but I think for us, the next level of that is moving past the IoT and really into home wellness and health um, is, is the next wave of that. And that's you know, systems like the Darwin system, for example, monitoring air quality, water quality, light levels within your home, UV scrubbers in your HVAC, um, all these things that are now monitoring live the quality of your home and how it affects you. Um, everyone, I mean, this was a trend before pandemic. Shoot, now that we've been in pandemic, everyone's, you know, worried about this. And especially on the West Coast, um, air quality has been a huge thing all summer with the fires. So really focus on, on pushing that. And again, us Californians, you know, trying to ban uh, gas out here and doing things like that, that's only gonna spread across the US. Um, so figuring out how these homes get uh, more environmentally friendly and sustainable is it's a challenge, um, but I think ties into that connectivity of the home. And realize on that end that your consumers are a lot more educated than they used to be. Yes. And they know what a MERV filter is now. Can you mm -hmm. imagine that would have been true six months ago? <laughs> Probably not. Well, thank you all for um, sharing your insights, some great information today. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, Peter, I know you have some stuff to close out, um, but uh, really enjoyed it. I look forward to uh, uh, going back and taking some notes. I was a little paying attention to listening to you at this point, but, uh, but thank you all very much. Yeah, thank you very much. So I'd like, I'd like to thank Betsy, Jeff, Felix, Chris, CJ, and Jonathan for the work they put into this and for sharing with us their time and their expertise. I really enjoyed the discussion and I'm sure our audience did as well. Uh, it's clear that there are loads of really exciting innovations being implemented and on the horizon within the sector. So um, there's now a networking roundtable discussion on M&A starting um, hosted by Wheel and Advisory. And you can access this through the agenda page within the Hub. And then we then have our final panel of the day on harmonizing design and data to drive new home sales, which begins in 15 minutes time and can be accessed through the agenda as well. So uh, thanks again to the speakers and we look forward to seeing you at the next session. Take Thank care. You.